So I think it's critical that, that kids understand how to play blocking schemes. They need to understand how they use their body. Very important. So what we're going to talk about first here, again, is the most important part of the body, in my opinion, in learning to play the run game. I think it starts with the hips and thighs. We identify this as the power pack. We'll tell guys, just so they get an idea, put your hands on your thighs and your hips in a squatting position and you feel the tension. That, they've identified their power pack right there. That's what we're going to step with. That's what we're going to make movement with towards an offensive lineman. Very important that we understand the power pack. If you look at a sprinter, who's probably the most powerful athlete in sports, when they come out of the starting blocks, their feet are staying in the blocks and they will almost be two feet past the starting line before their feet ever exit the blocks. Why is that? Because they are stepping with their power pack, not their feet, which is a weaker muscle group. Your feet will lie to you. And you can readjust with your hips as you come off the ball. When you, when you step, you're out of position. We also teach our players that their eyes are in their hands. So wherever that offensive lineman goes, they're shooting their eyes. So again, power pack and hands, critical playing run blocks. Right, as we talked about earlier, in teaching guys to, to, to step with their hips, I think it's very important that they learn how to use their hips. Here we're taking get offs. I've got a cage right here, it's about 44 inches high. And this is not our stance, but what I've taught, taught this player is we're going to step again with our hips. Now I'm going to slow this down, and you can see as he's working his get off, his feet are in the ground, flat back. That's another benefit from it. Feet in the ground using the strongest muscle group in the body as we talked about earlier. And get a good ball key. Feet in the ground. Right there. Now, something else I do whenever I grade athletes, I, gr I grade a get off on every single play. And the way I look at it, when that ball hits the crotch of the center, if his, hip, if his hips are not moving, it's a negative get off. If his hips are moving, it's a positive get off. Level three is something that we talk about when we stunt. Stunning, again, is working across a lineman's face or into the gap we were originally lined in. But when we stunt, we do not want to continue upfield if it's a run. In the passing game, no problem, that's fine. But when it's a run, we want to work on what I call level three. Now let me explain the different levels that I teach our linemen. The ball is level one, okay? So we're always trying to press the level one in our stance. Level two are the hips of the center. Level three are the hips of the other offensive linemen. So when we clear a block, we want to always be working down on level three right here. Very, very important. Again, if you work upfield, you don't make plays. If you play on level three in a running game, you make plays. That's how we identify levels right there. The ball is level one, the hips of the center level two, the hips of the other lineman level three. We also use this for pre-snap reads. All right, now we are gonna step with our feet. Anytime we stunt, and stunning is whenever you are penetrating a gap or you are trading to another gap. But when we stunt, now we're gonna step with our, our feet. And I call this stunt steps level three. Level three, we've already talked about. You know, level three is a pre-snap read. Level three is also a level that we want to play on so that we make plays. When we stunt, it's a 45 degree step, and then we're going to club and rip. The whole key now is to drive through with the second step. Now here we're shuffling with our athletes. We'll take them later on and we'll run. I'm just giving them a direction back here. Again, on a visual key, using a ball and a stick. I hear you. I've got this. This is the correct way to do it. He's stepping. Incorrect. He's crossing over. Club and rip. Stunt steps, level three. Here, I put him in a tilt. Excellent job right here. And again, when we stunt, I like to rip him. There is a time when we'll club over with the swim, but we like to rip them right here. Right, then we move them further away from the ball, simulating a defensive end in space. Here's another shot of it right here. Again, 45, club and rip. 
and they're shuffling out. We, we will turn and run on this later. All right, here's a good example of st steps level three. Now watch this defensive end. He's, he's studying the C gap. Now watch him work back on level three. If he had continued upfield, he would never make that play. Flatten back inside, level three. Very important. That is a, a big time technique and fundamental that defensive linemen need to understand. When you clear a blocker, don't continue running upfield. Watch the nose guard right here. Stunt, instead of running upfield, level three, he's back inside to make a play. That's an excellent shot of it right there. Stunt steps, level three. Defensive end right here, stunning inside this time. Stays on level three, makes the hit. Defensive tackle. He's stunting that big gap. And again, we step with our feet when we're going to gaps. He's going right there to that big gap. Now he fights back on level three. That's an excellent job right there. Same thing right here. Watch the tackles. He's stunting here. Stunt, you see the level? Trying to stay on level three. That's an excellent job. Again, if they just, when you stun, if you run up the field, you don't make plays. Defensive tackle right here. He hits the gap. Level three. Makes the play. If he had run up the field, there's no play to be made. Right tackle. Level three. Same thing. That's where plays are made, guys. Hit the gap, get penetration, and then you level out. Next, we'll move right here to shooting. This is a drill that we do every single day. I even use this one in pregame. And what we're trying to get right here with the athlete is teaching arm acceleration, hand placement, which is in the framework of the chest, and then teaching him to snap his hips. Again, he is not stepping with his feet. Arm acceleration, hand placement, and I mean throwing those hips. This is where your power is. Again, learning how to step with, with your hips I think is critical. And again, when you step with your feet, you're using a, a smaller muscle group, and you're not taking advantage of what your body can do. It's a good shot out right there. Let me slow it down for you. Again, arm acceleration. And all we're here, we're just face to face. Hands are on the knees right here. Get as flat a back as you can. Right there. Hand placement, arm acceleration, and now throw the hips. This is an excellent drill right here. We're teaching a guy how to snap his hips. All right, the next drill we've got right here is hip strike. Again, another drill that I use in pregame as well as every day in practice. Now, what I do, I tell the athlete on defense, you get your feet just like you would want them in your stance. And you are in your stance except that your hands are on your thighs instead of on the ground. Now, what he's going to do, wherever this athlete goes, that's where he's going to strike with his hands and his hips. I teach our athletes that your eyes are in your hands. So right here, he, see, he sees... Does the player go right there to his left? He's throwing his hands to the left. And the thing I want you to notice, he does not step with his feet. He's stepping with his hips. That's where the term hip strike comes from. He's got power. Now you can see a side shot of it right here. Again, he strikes. See the extension? That is very important that an athlete learns how to do that coming off the sled and you have an additional blocker coming pinning the hip you want to first make sure that the defender is keying the ball and he gets off on the ball you want to make sure that he strikes the sled and maintains great leverage you want to also maintain make sure that he buzzes his feet on contact and now he has to feel the adjacent blocker coming down on his hip when he feels the adjacent blocker come down on his hip, 
he wants to make sure that he attacks that adjacent blocker with his hip. So you want to make sure he pushes off his inside foot. He can even drop his weight where he can strike him with that near hip. At the same time, give a slight shoulder turn. As that adjacent blocker works off, now he has to show up in the gap. You can look at the left end here, in this case, number 91. This is against UCLA in the bowl game. You can see him attack the postman, who's a tackle. Here comes the tight end down. He wants to hip that tight end as he pushes off of his right foot. He wants to give a slight shoulder turn so he reduces the blocking surface on the double team. He, when the tackle works off, now he can show up in his gap, pursue the ball, and make the play. Again, here's another look. Just to keep the drill honest, I'll have the adjacent blocker go straight ahead where now he's not on the double team. So it keeps the defender honest. So he's not just playing the drill to play the drill. So I think that's real important. But it's also important that when the adjacent blocker comes down, that he really comes down and gives him a nice thump so he can feel that double team and he can feel that adjacent blocker come down on that hip. And you got to throw that hip back toward that adjacent blocker. Get a slight shoulder turn, really push off of that inside foot. Really push off that inside foot. You can see once again, to keep the drill honest, I'll have the adjacent blocker go straight ahead. And now your defender makes his strike. Now he just comes off, shows up in his gap. Once again, you can see the right three technique. Left as we're looking at it here from the back, from the end zone. He takes on a double team. He gives him the, the, the hip. He, he whips his shoulders back around. Slight shoulder turn, whips him back around, gets himself back square, and gets in on the tackle. This is an excellent job, and this is the way we defend the double team block here at Temple. Two on ones are what I, the term I like to use for double team slash zone. To a defensive lineman, they look the same. So in playing two on ones, we're going to get a base block, you know, a hard drive from the guy we're lined up on. Wherever we feel the pressure from, it usually comes from my gap. Wherever the pressure comes from, I want to hip into it. And I'll sit on the stool. So as I'm hipping in right here, now, if it is double team, there's no movement. If it's a zone and this lineman comes off, I'm in my gap. Come on back here, coach. Okay, if this lineman comes off right here, I'm still in my gap. So playing two on ones, it's critical that you sit down in your gap. Hip in, do not allow movement. In playing slip blocks, again, it's important that you connect with the guy that you're lined up on, but they're trying to exchange you out. So as I'm connected here on this lineman, okay, he's trying to exchange me to, to the opposite lineman and work up to the linebacker. What I want to do as, as a defensive lineman is I'm leveraging. Okay, When I feel him like I'm losing him, I'm going to snap him. By snapping right there, that gets me down the line of scrimmage, and it impedes his progress to get to the linebacker. It's a great way to play slip blocks. It's a great way to destroy the running game. Okay, here's the this drill I call the rip read drill. In the rip read drill, the way it's set up, uh, you have your left end. Okay, he's playing a five technique on the tackle, and as he makes his inside move, he is reading the guard. As the as he makes his inside move, he's stepping with his inside foot. As he steps with his inside foot, his eyes go to the guard or to the adjacent lineman. When he reads the guard, goes down flat. He wants to make sure he dips his backside shoulder, and he wants to make sure he goes down flat. He wants to dip and rip that backside shoulder and stay flat. You can see here in the UCLA game, the left end, he makes his inside move. He reads the tackle block down on the three technique. Now he knows – he has to go and call the train wreck. He takes on the full, the fullback, the backside guard, and the tight end stays on him. We'll take those numbers every time. That's a nice job of him flattening out. You can see here against Penn State, the left three technique. Uh, he does an excellent job of stepping with his inside foot. He reads the center, block back. Now he feels the he feels the high hat. All right, with the quarterback sitting there, does an awesome job getting his inside hand up. Ball disruption gets the ball out. That dang near led to a turnover, all right? Again, in this rip-read drill, uh, you can set it up 
to where now he reads the adjacent line and he makes his inside move. He puts his foot down, and now he has to redirect. Now he has to redirect. He reads the adjacent lineman. Now the adjacent lineman comes at him. All right, as he comes at him in a fan, he squeezes and maintains his B gap um, lane. His B gap. You can see here the left three technique. Again, he makes his inside move. He reads the center hat come at him. Now he redirects. He maintains his A gap, uses his hands, and is able to get in on the play. So you have your rules to what you have your um, guy do. What what you have your guy do on a rip situation. You see hi hat. All right, you, we will sometimes ask our guy to go inside in the A gap, okay, on hi hat. Other times we ask him to go in the B gap. All right, it's all up to the coach's discretion on how you want to handle that. Okay, again, as he makes his inside move, he steps with his inside foot. He reads the adjacent lineman. He sees him come at him. Now he puts his left foot down, and now he's ready to read. Let's talk about hoops. Hoops gives the defensive lineman the natural feel of turning the corner to get to the quarterback. There are five things that you look for when you run in the hoops. A, you want to make sure you get off on movement. So I have a ball where I snap the ball to make sure that they get off on movement. You also want to make sure that the outside foot is clearing where it's gaining ground. You want to make sure you really coach the inside foot. I call the inside foot the pivot torque. All right? With that inside foot, you want to make sure that toe is pointed in toward the quarterback 45 degrees because we all know Wherever that inside toe goes is where your hips go. And your hips have to be able to turn the corner when you're rushing the passer. You want to make sure you drop your inside shoulder as you run the hoops. You also want to make sure that you have a finish. As you can see here, we talk about the inside toe. The inside toe being pointed back in toward the quarterback 45 degrees. Because we all know wherever that toe goes, that's where your hips go. You can see he does a nice job with his inside toe. Again, as you run the hoops, you want to make sure that you emphasize the inside toe. You want to make sure that inside toe is going 45 degrees back in toward the center of the circle. And you want to make sure that you drop that inside shoulder along with. Let's go. The first drill that we'll start on here. The first drill that we'll start on here is the first pass. I told you the first pass of the part of the pass rush is your ball reaction and your first step. So what we'll do right now is we'll work on ball reaction and first step. The drill that we're going to work here is one leg get offs, one at a time. You guys go one at a time and get in line one at a time. Work one leg get offs. What we're going to try to do is the hand that we have on the ground, that same leg, you're going to go towards the camera. The, the hand that we have on the ground, and we're going to have that same leg up. What we're trying to do here is, is, work, is work the first part of the progression, which is ball reaction and first step. Good. Next. Ball reaction and first step. <clears throat> Ball reaction and first step. <clears throat> what we're trying to measure, the, the one leg get off for this. We're working on ball reaction and the first step part of it. What should ideally happen is the leg that is up, when they put their foot on the ground, that first step, that step should exceed or go beyond where that hand was on the ground. Let's, let's measure that, okay? Let's measure that. We're gonna use that cone as our measuring point. All right, go. Remember, that first step should exceed where that hand was on the ground. Good. Good. And you notice that all three of them, that first step went past where that cone was. They lined their hands up next to the cone that step went beyond the cone, which tells you that all three of them have opportunities to be good pass rushers and that they can gain ground with the first step. You know, and it's and as, much as, a, as, it's as much as a measuring device as it is a drill to get, because you understand this, if your guys can't get past where that cone is on the ground, you probably don't have guys who are guys that can get upfield because they're a little bit too tightly wound through the hips and they don't get upfield as good, so you gotta discover some other ways to get them to be as good as you want them to be as pass rushers because pass rushers gain ground on that first step. All right, the first drill you saw was one leg get offs where we were working on the first part of the pass rush, ball reaction and first step. What we're getting ready to work on now is the second part of the pass rush which we call close. What we're gonna do is just work a basic close drill. What we're trying to do now is close that distance 
on, from the line of, on the line of scrimmage between the offensive lineman and the defensive lineman. Now, what we like to do with this drill, the cones will be two yards apart from one another. We'll have a young man backing out as fast as he can. We'll have another one closing to him as fast as he can. Now, we'll put a watch on this sometimes in practice just to, just to time it, just to time what it is. And a, a good time, the optimal time for this is .98 seconds or less. He, you want that guy to go from his three-point stance to touching him in .98 seconds or less. And what this is broken down into is that you have about 2.5 seconds to get to the quarterback. So that means the defensive lineman wants to get to the offensive lineman in not .98 seconds. That gives him just a little over a minute and a, a second and a half to get around a corner and get to the quarterback. So we're, we're just working on that second part of it. We're working on the closed part of the drill. All right, hand on, hand on the cone. Hands got to be on the cone. All right. Good. Next, let's go. And we'll just rotate him in and out. They'll touch, they'll touch him on the outside breast with his inside hand. How quick can he get on him? All right, good. Next, we'll rotate it in and out. Good. Boom. How quick, quick can they get on him? And that's, and that's the drill. And we're just going to work on clothes. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put a clock on it. Instead of moving the ball, I'm going to use my voice. I'm going to see how fast it takes us to get there. If we can, do we have some point nine? Get your hand even with the cone. Get your foot even with the cone. Do we have any point nine eight guys? So move the touch. Go. Huh? Huh? That, that was point eight eight. That's, that's pretty good. Wait, let me reset it. All right. Go. One point two. It's not fat, not good enough. Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me reset it. All right. Hit. Go. Oh, that's good. Point seven eight. And, and if, if, if you've got a young man who can get there that quick, he's got a chance to get on that lineman, get his, get his hands off of him, beat him, and get around to the quarterback. Now we'll, we're getting ready to go to the next phase, which is working on the actual move that we put on the offensive lineman. This next drill that we're getting ready to do, that we'll work on, is called the hand drill. I'm a big hand teacher. You know, I, all, most of you people have seen the old Karate Kids movie, Wax On, Wax Off. Well, that's a real integral part of what we do, some of the things, some of the martial art things that we do in trying to get our guys in a position where they can put moves. I really believe this, that if you eliminate the offensive lineman's hands, it's hard for them to block you. So what we try to do as much as we possibly can during the pass rush is get the offensive lineman hands off of us. And so what we, we, we got to work on this lineup, we're going to work on what we call a hand drill. We're going to have an offensive guy going against a defensive guy. And uh, we're just going to work the drills, the hand drills. Uh, get, get in the camera, get sideways. Now, what they're going to do with the drill, who's going to be offensive going to be? What's the defensive guy? All right, he's going to be the, Deion's the offensive guy, Wax the defense guy. What they're going to do, you're going to see the offensive guy going three positions. Deion is going to get set like an offensive lineman. He's going to work hands high, hands middle, hands low. He'll work one hand at a time. Now, when he works one hand, Wax has got to work one hand. If he works his right hand, Wax has got to work that hand off. If he works his hands high, Wax needs to keep his hands high. If Deion works his hands low, Wax needs to keep his hands low. And we're just going to work just mirroring his hands, basically. It's a mirror drill with the hands, working the hands, trying to keep the hands off you. We're, we're going to stall, I'll, I'll tell you to go, and then we'll go break to stop it. All right, go. Hands high, keep high hands high. He brings two, low hands low, high hands high, cross, knock his hands off, near hands high, boom, break it off. And basically that's the drill. Now, we're going to move to that, and we're going to move the drill, and we're doing it a little bit slower so you can see the, the technique of the thing. Now, as Wax works it, sometimes he's going to work cross, but sometimes you're going to work near hand to near hand. And sometimes you're going to work far side hand and near hand. And that's just a different way we work the drills. Let's go one more time. Let's look at it. Go. Work near hand and near hand. High hands high, low hands low. Land, high hands high, low hands low. Cross hand. Just working his hands and just mirroring his hands, trying to get his hands off of you to make sure. Good. Break it off to make sure that we don't allow those offensive linemen to put their hands on it. You always hear us holler, eliminate his hands, eliminate his hands. And we'll try to eliminate one hand or the other, keeping the same premise that everybody else does on the pass rush. We're always going to rush half the man, 
because half of half, uh, one of us is better half than him, half of him any day. But we're going to try to eliminate his hands as we go. What we're getting ready to work now is the second part of the hand drill. You saw us working it with uh, stationary position in front of each other, just mirroring the hands. Now what we do, we add a movement component to it. What, what our defensive guy does now, he offsets the offensive simulator to the side that he's rushing on. The offensive simulator is going to back up, give him hands, give him hands. He's going to work his hands. Now, if the defensive simulator is doing this drill right, stepping on that outside toe of the offensive lineman, in other words, simulate stepping on that toe, there ought to be a natural turn in the drill. And as the natural turn occurs, the defensive guy will put on his final move and go around the offensive simulator. Let's go, let's look at the drill. All right, I'm gonna say go, you guys work on it. All right, go. Good, as there ought to be a natural turn and as he turns naturally, he ought to give him a, a rip or a swim, one or the other and come across. One more time, one more time, one more time. Go, there's a natural turn and as that natural turn occurs, he ought to make his move and come around and run and go to the quarterback. That's, that's basically the second part of the hand drill. And we do this just to give our guys a, a feeling of what it's like live in a situation with a guy moving and backing up, going back to the quarterback, trying to keep in sync with what I'm doing on my line to the quarterback. And that's what we do with the hand drill. Earlier you saw us do the two-yard close drill where we put the stopwatch on it. Now what we do, we move the cones closer, we move them down to a one-yard drill, we do this directly after we do the hands drill, and we actually begin to work individual moves against, against the offensive simulator. The cones are one yard apart, we're going to do various moves working towards the quarterback off, off of our pass rush. All right, let's go to work. All right, the first move we're going to work is just a basic swat and swim, cut him in half on the outside. Brace move we're going to use just really a, a, a normal down breaking swim. All right, I'm going to move the ball. We're going to set, we're going to go on ball movement. All right. Good. Go. Go by him. All right, next. Give me the next one. Good. Go by him. Give me the next one. Good. Go by him. That's exactly what we want right there. We got our hands down on, we knock the hand down, we got our hips open, and we run around him. The next move, we're going to use our inside hand and a lever in, in, a, in a club to run around him. A club, or, or sometimes some people call them levers, to run around. All right, inside hand. Inside hand, break the outside hand, use the club, swim around it. All right, here you go. Go. There it is, right there. All right, one more time. We're going to get this on. You get these on tape? All right, here you go. <laughs> Good, there you go, right there. One more time, one more time. Good, good, and getting around, and get the hips open. One more time, one more time. Good, getting the hips open and getting around him. We got it, we got it, knocking that outside hand down, we're getting that lever on him to try to make sure we can club that guy, get him out of our way so we can get around him and we're gonna accelerate to the quarterback. That's using the inside break, outside lever, and the swim over the top to get to the quarterback. Just a little variation off your swim move just to give you another little move to use. All right, here, here we go. The third and final move we're going to use is just a basic rip. We're going to put our hands out. We're going to flash our hand on them. We're going to get our rip fitted, and we're going to run past him. All right, get your toes on the cone, hand on the cone. And let's go to work. Go. Good. That's a good rip. Run it to the quarterback. Give me another one. Go. Good. Run it around. Good, drive it right through him. Not hard to get it there, right there. Here you go. Good, right through it. It ought to power through it with the rip. Give me one more shot. One more shot. One more shot. Power th right through him on the rip. Good, right. One more shot and run through it. All right, and finish ripping it. It's good. What we just did, we just worked through one yard close. We've given you three different moves that you can teach young people that will help them be a little bit better pass rushers. And remember this, any time you would pass rush, it finishes with two things. It either finishes with a swim or a rip. And no matter what you do, it's going to finish up that way. And so that's what we try to get done here, and that's why we, we try to get There always comes a point in time when you get third down and long. And when you get third and down and long, what we like to do is we like to call what we get in the jet alignment. 
When we get the jet alignment, it kind of changes our philosophy a little bit on the pass rush because now we're no longer working out of our, our, our slant steps. We're just coming off the ball, getting to the field. What we try to teach our guys this is that there's a, a one, one yard outside, one yard up the field ratio that you need to get to that offensive lineman before you make a move. What we mean by that is we're going to set, a, set, set a, a point on the field that's one yard outside that offensive lineman and one yard behind him. That's where we're going to make our move, and that's where we're going to make a move. And what we're going to work on today is three different things that you can do to teach your young people speed rush. And so off of that, off of the speed rush outside. So what we're going to do is set up the field here. Come on. So we're going to set the field up here. We're going to set a, set a lineman up, Dion, right there, facing the camera. All right. Now we're going to set a mark. Get your feet square. That's a yard behind him and a yard outside of him. All right. That mark. All right. Now what you guys are going to do, you're going to come, you're going to, Deion, you're going to set to that mark. And at that mark, you guys, the first thing you guys are going to do, set, flash your hands, flash your hands, is you're going to work, you're going to work the wiper. All right, he's going to flash his hands, come on, and you're going to wipe his hands, run to the quarterback. All right, wipe his hands, run to the quarterback. All right, right now, we're just going to run, run, work that speed rush part of it when we're rushing up the field. The first move we're going to work is what I call the wipers. And it just works like a windshield wiper on your car. They're going to wipe across their eyes, and they're going to turn the corner and run that arc to the quarterback. Uh, I'm going to get inside, and I'm going to snap the ball and watch their movement. Good. Wiper, come on. Next. Good. Working, working that one more time. Who's up next? Who's up next? Uh, get your eyes in there, work the work. And all you're trying to do is get those hands off you, use the windshield wiper motion. Remember this, teach your young people, the hands are across the eyes. That gives you all this surface area in which to hit his hands with. And that's another way to get his hands off you. The next drill we'll go to, the next one we'll go to, what we're going to call is scissors. All right, we're going to walk through it. And when we're, when we're walking the scissors, it's the same thing. I got myself, I'm angled in, I'm, I'm going up the field. As he comes, I'm going to beat him to the mark. I'm going to wipe him with the scissors. Inside hand through, outside hand on the elbow, and I'm just going to step through and run my arc to the quarterback. Run my arc to the quarterback. All right, let's run it, guys. Good. Same level. That's good. Next, let's go. We'll use that one. That's a good one. Hands at the same level. Good. Same level. So we're wiping hand wipers. What we're trying to get done, guys, what we're trying to accomplish on this one more time is we're going to step through as he comes, and I'm going to use my hands. I'm going to wipe him with both of my hands through. It gets my shoulders open a little bit, and I'm going to step through with my foot and arm and bring it through, and I'm going to go run to the quarterback. It's working the wipers, working the wipers. Now, final move that we're going to work is just a basic 10 o'clock speed rush. 10 o'clock rip, 10 o'clock speed rush. We're just going to angle in, come off that ball, and we're just going to beat him to that point. And when we get to that point, we're just going to turn that rip at 10 o'clock and just run around the corner because we beat him to the spot. Because we beat him to the spot, we're just going to turn the corner. All right, let's go work it. 10 o'clock speed rush. Come on, Chaz, let's go. Beat him to that point, just 10 o'clock speed rush. Let's go, Wax. 10 o'clock speed rush. Good, right around the corner. Remember, keeping my body lean, keeping my, my feet under me, nice and tight. I want to run that one-by-one -one relationship with the offensive lineman. I want to beat him to that point. And if I beat him to that point, I'm just going to rip and run and turn the corner. But if he, ever, if he intersects my point, I'm going to use my wipers. I'm going to use my scissors move. You can use a break in the swim. But whatever move you choose to use, I just like teaching the wiper move and the scissor move because they're very easy to learn and they're very easy to execute. What we're going to do, introduce to you now, is, is the bull rush part of the drill. You know, we've already told, showed you the hands, knocking down the hands, getting hands off, swimming and ripping those basic parts of pass rush. Now we're going to show you the bull rushing part of the pass rush. What we try to do here and what we try to teach our guys is that when we bull rush, we, do, we want to do a couple things. Number one, we want to keep our pad level down, keep our eyes below the offensive man's eyes. Number two, 
We want to have our hands inside. We want to get full extension off the rush. And number three, we never want to get our hips involved in a pass rush when we bull rush it. In other words, we never want to run and, and roll our hips. We want to keep our hips out of it. We want to keep our backs nice at a nice level, keep a, a nice bend in our knees, and we want to run through. And then when we get to the point where they try to stop us, we want to snatch them and go around them and finish and go to the quarterback. That's what we're going to work on now, bull rushing. Now, you always hear me as a coach talk about when we bull rush, we don't get our hips involved, we want to push a car. You know, when you push a car, you never roll your hips. You get your hips behind the car and you push it. And so that's what we want to do now, push the car. Get in there. The first part of the thing that we, we do when we start the bull rush segment is we do it with our eyes closed. Our defensive guy has his eyes closed because I want him to feel when that offensive lineman tries to stop him more so than see it. So we're going to start to drill with our eyes closed, and he's going to snatch when he feels the offensive lineman sit down on him. All right, here you go. Sit down pretty quick. Go. Snatch. Number two, here you go. Next. We're going to snatch. We've got our eyes closed. We want to, we're going to drive and, and run that arc to the quarterback. Go. Press. Push the car. Snatch. Go to the quarterback. That's a good job. That's the first part of the drill. Now, the second part of the drill is we work it, we, we do it from locked in. That's the first part. The second part, we get in our three-point stance, we get in our two-point stance, we run to it, we bull rush it. Now, we've already done it with our eyes open, our eyes closed, rather. We keep our eyes open now. We just run through it, and we run through the full bull rush. Let's go, guys, on go. Let's go to work the bull rush. Go. Hands in, rush, boom, snatch, and go around. There you go. Next part, keep your eyes below his eyes. Keep your eyes below his eyes. Let's go. Keep your eyes below his eyes. Go. Press, boom, snatch, and go around. And, and that's the drill. And that's how we work it. We work the bull rush. We're going to make sure we get our hips out of the way. When he tries to stop us, we're going to get, his, get our hips out of the way and get, go around him. Now, we, we do that because he stops his feet to stop us. We keep our feet alive. That gives us an opportunity to turn the corner and get to the quarterback. Now, second part, bull rush move we, we're going to teach. Second bull rush move we're going to teach. We, we teach the stab and grab. That's the second part of bull rush. What we do now, everything is exactly the same. The only difference now is we put one hand on him, thinking with the premise that one arm is longer than two. We're still going to push the car. We're still going to drive. When he sits down to block us, get your hands up. When he sits down to block us, we're going to grab that hand and go around. Grab that hand and go around. Let's one more time. We're going to push the car. We got the one hand on it. One arm is longer than two. We're driving. Get your hands up. We're driving. Boom. He sits down to stop us. We get that arm off of us, and we go around it. All right? Let's go. Let's run it. Go. Sits down. Boom. Get that arm off you and go around. That's a good job. Next. Go. Drive one arm longer than two. He sits down to stop him. Arm off it. Go to the quarterback. One more time. Go. One arm's longer than two. Drive. Get it off of him. Go around him. Good. One more. One more shot. Good shot. That's a good job. Push the car. Push the car. One arm's longer than two. Get it off you. Go around him to the quarterback. That's a good job. That's the stab and grab part of it. We're going to work it like that, locked in. Then the next thing we do is just like we do with the bull rush, we do it from a three-point stance. Give me another offensive guy up here. Now let's do it from a three-point stance. Let's run to it. Let's run to it. Here you go, guys. We got it from the locked in part. Let's do it from the run part. Shade. You do it from shade. Go. One arm's longer than two. Stab, grab, go around him. Good. Here you go. One arm's longer than two. One arm's longer than two. Go. Stab. Get your extension. Grab. Go around him. All the way around him. Make sure you grab it nice and tight. One more shot, Dion. One more shot. Nice and tight. Stab, wrap, go around him. That's a good job. And we're out right around to the quarterback. Yeah, that's good. We've just shown you two power rush moves. We've shown you the push-pull, as I call it. We push him off us. We slide and get our feet past him. And we've just shown you the stab and the grab. To, to us, those are the two basic power moves that we're going to use here at Benedict College to teach our guys to pass rush in order to give them another move. Understand this. Anytime you, you're teaching pass rush to young men, you've got to put them in position where you show them some things different things in the pass rush and they decide as pass rushers what they're good at and they start working those things i always tell my guys here you need to have a, a, a move that is your pet move you need to have a counter off your pet move and then you need to have a second move that you go to an alternate move 
and then you work the rest of your package out from there. And that's what we try to do. We try to give them a, a range of things and a pass rush to help them get better. What we've shown you is some basic things so far that we, we teach in the pass rush. Now, as I said earlier, I tell my guys that they need to have a pet move and they need to have an alternate move off the pet move or, or, a, or a counter move. What, I, what we're getting ready to go show you right now is, okay, we've started, we've worked the rip. We didn't get our rip quite fitted. Our rip's not in there the way it should be or that offensive lineman has decided he's going to lock down on my rip and stop me from forward progress. What we're going to do now is counter out of the rip and go to two things that can help us as counter moves to rip. The first one, we're going to pull it out, our rip out, and go to a swim. And the second one, we're going to pull our rip out and go to a spin, which are two counter moves off the, moves off of the rip. All right, guys, let's lock it in. Let's lock and load. Let's get locked in. Let's work the, let's work the counter move off the swim, for, the swim move off the rip first. Go. Drive. Boom. And then come over the top. That's guy. You guys see that? He drove. He didn't have his rip quite fitted. His rip wasn't quite fitted. He pulled it out, came back over the top. Give me one more shot. Give me, let me see one more of them. Let me see one more. Let me see one more. All right? Jeez. He's got his rip fitted in. He's got his foot up ready to go. Go. Drive. He, he didn't get it. He reversed it and came out because it was ripped down. Give me one more. Give me one more look at it. Give me one more look at it. Got his rip fitted. Got his feet in good position. He's going to drive. Drive. He's got it locked down, boom, he can't get by there, have it already fitted. He's going to reverse it, come around, go to the quarterback. That's one, that's one of the counter moves off the rip. The next counter move off the rip is nothing but a basic spin. And what I want to do in the spin as I execute that, I want to make sure I stay on my drive, but as I'm driving and he gets me, as I pull it out, I want to make sure I pull it out, I want to sit into his body, and I want to sit down into him, and I want to do what I always say, I keep my chicken wing high. Keep my backside arm high as I spin around him. I want to spin around him nice and tight and come and accelerate off to the quarterback. All right? Let's run it, guys. Let's run it, guys. Get in there. Get nice locked in there. Get locked in. Start your drive and then go. Go. Nice and tight. Good chicken wing. Give me somebody else. Keep that chicken wing high. That's a good job, guys. That's a good job. Get your drive on. All right. Drive. Nice and tight. Good. Give me one more. Give me one more. Go. Drive. Nice and tight. Good. That's a good job. That's a good job. We've just shown you two counter moves that, that are very easy to teach and implement into your defensive pass rush package. You get those guys, you put them in position to be successful as pass rushers, and then the offensive lineman or the guy that they're playing against gives them something else. They have to have the ability to have something to go to, and that's what we try to get our guys to do understand. If that rip is not completely fitted, you've got a counter move off of it. You've got a counter move. We've just shown you what the counter moves are off of, off, of a, off of a rip move. If you don't get your rip fitted or he locks down on your rip. What we're getting ready to show you now, many coaches tell you now you have a two-way go. Uh, and a lot of players, you know, you can tell them a two-way go but really don't understand it. What we try to do here is we try to give our guys the optimal situation when they should make that inside move on their offensive lineman. And that's what two-way go means. It means I'm going one way up the field outside, but the offensive lineman does something to give me an inside move. We tell, show our guys exactly when they can use the inside move. We call this drill rush reaction. Now, we're going to show you two parts of this drill. Number one, I'm a, we're going to show you the drill versus a 4-3 defense with a regular defensive three technique or a five technique rushing. And then we're going to show you how we do the drill here, to, the same drill with our slanting, moving type defense. All right, let's, we're going to show you right here first out of a 4-3. Let's go, guys. All right, we're just going to work and tell our guy when to make an inside move. I want you to go do that right there. All right, here you go. He's going to rush straight up the field, and he's going to react to what the offensive lineman does to him. Go. Boom, inside. There you go. Let's go. Let's go. All right, next. Set. Good. He, all he did was set, so he's just straight outside of it. we just reacting to what he does. All right, one more time. We're just reacting to what he does. Set. Good. He just stayed there, so we're just gonna we're just gonna stay upfield. One more time, one more time, one more time. Set. Good. He set out on us. He gave us the inside move. All we're telling the guys is, look, I'm taking off up the field on a straight pass rush. 
If that guy oversets me a little bit, he gives me inside, I'm going to take it. If he stays his course, he gives me a hard three set, a hard set, I'm going to stay my course and rush it. Now, we just showed you the other way of rush reaction. Now we're going to show you versus a, a slanting defense. We showed you if it was a straight-up rush defense. Now we're going to show you a slanting defense. All right, there's two things that can happen. I'm going to pinch tackle. I'm pinching down to the guard. All right, that guard can hard set me, hard set me. Just set straight back. He can hard set me. If he hard sets me, I'm pinching to his hip. As he hard sets me, I'm going to stay my course. I'm going to swim him, rip him, whatever move that I plan to use against him. And I'm going to go, go to the quarterback. All right? Now, I'm pinching down to him. If he sets out to me, I'm going to change my course. I'm going to use whatever move is necessary to get me inside of him. And I'm going to go to the quarterback. That's, that's the options on my two-way go. Number one, he sets hard. Hard three set. Number two, he sets a little bit towards me. Once he slides towards me, I'll make my inside move. Let's go to work on that, guys. Let's go to work. Go. Good. Stay this course. Next. Stay this course. Set. Stay this course. Go. Nice and tight inside of him. Here you go. Good, nice and tight inside of him. That, that's rush reaction. We've shown you rush reaction straight up, and we've also shown you with a slanting defense. So, th so that gives you a, a, a range of things that you can teach your kids to let them understand, okay, if they do this, this is where the two-way go comes from. That's where this principle comes from. The offensive lineman does this to you. He slides to you. He gives you an inside move. You take it. He sets hard at what I call a three-set by just moving that, back, that outside foot and staying stationary there in that position. I stay my course, and I rush outside of him. And uh, that's how we teach our guys how to take a two-way go. Okay, we've been through a, a pretty good range of pass rush moves and things and supplemental moves that you can show your young people how to uh, counteract things, how to counteract different pass sets. What I'd like to end up with tonight is to show you a couple different moves that I really like that I think are moves that you can add into your kid's pass rush package to help him be a better pass rusher. Uh, the first move is, is what, what I call a high block. And a high block is a move where I take my hands and I literally block both of his hands with them, pressing them up and going around him. And the second move is what I call a pull, shuffle, shuffle. Both moves are, are good moves to use no matter where you want to put them on an offensive line. Uh, the high block can be termed a power move. The pull, shuffle, shuffle can be termed a finesse move. But they're both really good moves to, to, to teach young people and as, as defensive linemen. Can I have somebody to go demonstrate to? When we, to demonstrate the high block. Just put your hands up. When I demonstrate the high block, I come off the ball. All I'm going to do is get under his hand, high block him, step off, and go, and, go, and go to the quarterback. All right? Step off, go to the quarterback. Let's look at that one more time. I'm coming. I got my body lean. Get your hands high. Get your hands high. I'm going to high block him, and I'm going to the quarterback. All right? I'm going to catch both his hands, go to the quarterback. All right? The second move is the pull, shuffle, shuffle. The way I like to teach my guys to get the pull, shuffle, shuffle, earlier I showed you to stab and grab off the power. What I like to do, do with the pull, shuffle, shuffle, I like to stick that hand in there to make it look like a stab and grab. Not to go all the way through it, but get him to react, the offensive lineman to react to it, the stab and grab. I stick it in there, reacts to it, I grab a lever, I shuffle, re pull, shuffle, shuffle, I expand to the quarterback. I expand myself to the quarterback. All right, guys, let's run it a little bit. Let's show, let's show them the high block. Go. High block, go to the quarterback. All right, next. Go. High block, go past him. All right, give me one more. That's a good one. Go. High block, that's a good one. Make sure you finish him. High block and good one. All right, here you go. That's the high block move. We're going to block him high, preferably as he shoots him. I want to catch him. Keep those hands high, step off, go to the quarterback. Now the next move, we talked about earlier, pull, shuffle, shuffle. I want to set like I'm going with the stab and grab, but I'm not going to stick the stab all the way. I'm just going to shoot it at him, and then I'm going to get a lever and run around him. Shuffle, shuffle, and go. Go. Good. Pull, shuffle, shuffle. Go. Good. There you go. Pull, shuffle, shuffle. Good job. Next. Go. There you go, right there. That's it right there, guys. That's the one right there. Let's do one more. Let's go one more. Go. 
Good. Good pull, shuffle, shuffle. Go. That which makes the drill. You see the difference? That's the drill right there. Basically, we just showed you the high block. We showed you the pull, shuffle, shuffle. Two excellent moves that you can use as supplemental moves, teaching your kids, give them opportunities. Okay, again, high hat, getting a high hat, and then a quick release. We want to retrace our steps and be able to fend because we're going to bring some pressure on passing downs. Teams know that and they're going to want to screen us. Okay, and a great advantage to that is teaching your kids how to defend it before it even happens. Get your kids to retrace their steps and defend that screen. Uh, the next drill is six point explosion. Now we're just coming on all fours in our hands and we're trying to be as quick as we can to get our hands up on the opponent. And you can see right here our hips are back on our toes, on our heels, and we're just going to come out our hips. Now right here we're just getting our hands up as fast as we can. And now we're going to put it all together where we're actually coming out of our hips and exploding. And you can see right here these guys are really throwing their hips and coming the next one will be a three-point explosion from the six-point explosion. You can do these drills in any progression that you like. Uh, this is just how we run it right here. Now with three three-point explosion, same thing as we did before. Now we're just in a three-point, not really taking any steps, just coming out of our hips, and again leading with our hand and trying to be violent and getting off of a block. Right here, you can see the guys are doing a great job. Now right here, now we're not actually trying to take the pad up, we're just practicing hands and hips coming out of our hips right now, being explosive and being as violent as possible. And you see these guys are doing a good job of coming out the hips, not taking any steps. And that's how we play, we're coming out of our hips, we're being violent with our hands, and we have a saying, leave with your hand, your feet will fall. Alright, now let's go to blow delivery. Let's look, you know, in a live situation of what it's like for a guy to use his hips. Now this, this is a 250 pound defensive end. This guy he's going against is about 290, 300. But watch him. Watch him. See the feet stay in the ground? Power, strike, that's blow delivery. That's what I'm talking about right there. Blow delivery. Leverage. He takes that guy and knocks him back about two yards in the backfield. Same thing right here. Again, their eyes are in their hands. See the, see the hips coming? Leverage. Lineman comes out to the outside right there with hands are here. Hips, feet are in the ground right there. He's stepping with his hips. He's got power. The outside, see right here, the hands went out. Leverage. Now he feels he's pushing him out. Leverage back in. Again, stepping with the hips and learning how to use your upper body. All the drills that we just went over, they teach guys about leverage. You've got to put pressure where pressure is. Here's a game shot right here. This was against Notre Dame. Now watch this defense man. He, he is 250. This guy was about 320. He stepped with his, with his hips. He knocks him right back into the hole. Great job with the hips. That's power. Same thing, watch the defensive end right here. I mean, he takes that offensive tackle who's a lot bigger than him, and he just, I mean, leverages him right back into the hole. He can do that because of one thing, he's stepping with his hips. Watch the nose guard right here. He snaps his hips, steps with his hips, look at the center. He knocks the center back past where the guard was. Place drill, we do this every day. And again, these are drills right here that I think help develop, you know, guys during the season. But hands replaced, all we're doing right here, we're getting loose. Well, I hate just doing drills just to get loose. Let's get something else out of us. So we're working a little lateral shuffle right here but we're replacing our hands. When a guy gets inside leverage, we're taking it away. Bottom line is whoever has inside leverage is gonna win. So you can see the athletes right there, we're getting loose, plus we're getting something else out of it. It's, it's a great warm-up drill right here. 
when you're working a fundamental that all defensive linemen have got to be able to do, and that's replace their hands when they lose inside leverage. So you're killing two birds with one stone right here. Shrug drill, very important to me. How do you get off blocks? You know, a lot of times we don't, you know, coaches don't teach athletes how to get off the block. I, the term I hate more than anything is, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get off the block and go make a play. Hey coach, how do I get off the block? Well, we use the shrug drill, very important. We start in a fifth position right here. Here's the defensive athlete. If he's going to his right, he's going to drop his right foot. If he's going to his left, he's going to drop his left foot. It is a 45 degree drop step right here. I tell him there's two movements in. It's a drop and lock right there, then a throw and go. Fifth position, good flat back. And that's not straight back, it's a 45 degree angle. It's drop and lock. We're trying to create separation. What we've done, we collision this offensive lineman. Now we're trying to create separation and go make a play with pursuit. Say so we're getting off, this is how we get off blocks. Drop and lock, throw and go. And I teach our players to rip off of it and try to throw with two hands. So you get held so much, it takes a two-handed throw to get off of it. He's got a shorter step, but it's fine. It's 45 degrees. Drop and lock, throw and go. This is another drill we take in the free game. I want guys to be in tune with what they've got to do to be good players right up until game time. All right, now what we've got with leverage shrug is this athlete is going to press on a shoulder. Whichever shoulder he presses on, we're going to leverage it. And then I'm back here, when I say go, now we're going to shrug it. Here's an end zone copy of it. Again, this athlete on his own, he's going to press on one of these shoulders. Well, he presses on this athlete's right shoulder. So he immediately, it's push, pull. Push him with the right hand, pull with the left hand. And he's shuffling now. You don't want to cross over, you have no balance. Push, pull. When I say go, that's like the running back is broken right here. Go. Now shrug drill. So we're learning how to leverage blocks and get off blocks, which is what we, we want our defensive line to be able to do. Leverage and get off. We can perform these drills in helmets only or full gear. Form fit tackle is the first drill. It teaches defenders proper fit position to emphasize safety. We will teach defenders to keep head up when tackling, as well as clubbing arms up while keeping ankles, knees, and hips bent. This ensures that the tackler's whole body absorbs contact, not one area, which could result in injury. We will align each defender with a partner, one foot apart from one another. Tackler's aiming point is to attack the near number with head up, bent in ankles, knees, and hips. Club arms up while keeping elbows tight to body, rubbing the ribs. Defenders will take one rep from the right side and another rep to the left side. Watch as number 58 in the middle of your screen clubs up violently in a short area with his head up, body up on body. Number 53 on your left is generating a club in a short area without winding up. Rubbing his ribs, okay, number 58 is winding up a little more than we would like in this position. Okay. The second drill in tackle circuit A is what we call club and base. Club and base takes what we learned in form fit and we execute at full speed with more space between tackler and ball carrier. Club and base teaches defenders to generate a violent club with arms and hips while keeping their base upon contact. The goal is to see how violent the defender can make the club within a constricted area without a running start or winding up. Do not allow participants to be more than two yards apart from each other during the drill. It will defeat the purpose of the drill. We want to generate power in our club in a short area. As you can see from this picture, defender and ball carrier are two yards apart and each pair is about three yards apart. Coach will give a direction 
to the ball carriers and the tackles will mirror step in that direction and perform a club and base. The tackler in this picture is winding up with his arms. Okay. We want to keep our elbows tight and we want to generate power in short area again without winding up. This is a flaw in young tacklers that has to be corrected. Watch on the right side of your screen as number 38 is compact with his elbows tight, he clubs up violently, and he puts his body up on the offensive player's body. We want no separation there, and that's how we can tell it's the type of tackle we want. If viewing it from the side and you see separation between tackler and ball carrier, tackler is not rolling his hips and putting his body up on the ball carrier. Number 96 has a great base, his elbows are tight, he's generating a club in a short area, his body is up on the ball carrier's body and he's taking him back on contact. Number 91 is attacking the near number and as we tell him the longer the attack goes the more north we want his feet to go. The final drill in tackle circuit A is what we call rapid fire and recoil. This drill takes the coaching points of form fit and club and base and is aimed at generating maximum shock through the movement of hips, feet, and arms. The focus is on the ability to accelerate feet on contact while staying in a good tackling position. We want to maintain base on contact with a violent club. The key to rapid fire is the tackle and ball carrier must move feet quickly in and out of the hole. Tackle or club ball carrier four times with a five yard finish on the fourth rep. Coach will give ball carriers a direction. All ball carriers must go in the same direction. And again, move quickly in and out of the bag. After pairing up at the same time in rapid fire, we will work recoil in pairs. Now we will get in and out of four different bags and again finish with a tackle and a five yard finish at the end. Number 96 is getting his feet in and out of the hole and the ball carrier is matching it as well. Repeatedly throughout games with the defensive line, linebackers and the secondary. It is a drill designed to get defenders to think like the runner. What is he going to do next? Defender must close to running back in an inside out fashion and expect the cutback. Our aim point is the near number. We want a violent club and we want to accelerate our feet north on contact. The runner and defender are separated by five yards and two and a half yards to each dot on the side. Ball carrier's job is to run straight to the dot keeping his shoulder square and showing the defender his numbers. In addition, he wants to keep his head away from the contact because the drill is designed for the tackler. Watch here as number 38 puts his body right up on the offensive player's body. There's no separation at all, clubs up violently, rubs the ribs with his elbows, and takes the ball carrier back five yards. The defender in this case performs the same tackle, head is up, Violent club in a short area, rubbing the ribs with his elbows, takes him back five yards on contact. Number 91, violent club up, accelerate his feet, take him back on contact. Great job by number 40, accelerating his feet on contact. Notice the knee drive here, and the longer the tackle goes, the more he tries to take him north. Excellent club by number 33, generating power in a short area. Attacks the near number. In addition to the angle tackle, we will add the angle tackle with the spin. That is the reason, again, why we will attack the near number. If we attack the outside number and the ball carrier were to spin inside, we would miss tackles repeatedly. Watch here as number 56 attacks number two. He tries to spin inside. 56 fights him on contact. Violent club by number 53. Fight on contact versus the spin.
Our next drill is the tight area group tackle. Tight area group tackle will use three defenders. In this case, it's our defensive lineman. We're trying to teach the defenders to understand if they can't make the play in a tight area, they want to certainly leverage the ball, meaning keeping it on their inside shoulder, so that the other participants can go ahead and make the tackle. We stress this point by using a rabbit who's going to try to go back and forth and outdistance himself to the edge until he's pulled up by the outside men in his three area group tackle. After several reps back and forth, the coach will blow the whistle and the runner will try to break free. First man in will secure the tackle. Tacklers number two and three. Here's a tight shot. Again, number 33 is trying to stress number 96. Number 96 cuts the ball off. The rabbit's back and forth just to overemphasize the fact that we're going to cut the ball off. When he makes a move, we finish with a club and base and a violet strip. This teaches defenders to stay square, not get their shoulders turned, not cross over and shuffle step in order to keep the ball in front of us and inside. Again, finish with a violent strip attempt. The next drill, drill that we're going to do, go to is goal line tackle drill. This drill is done in a small area. And in this small area, we're going to have them put your heels on the goal line, and the guy's going to run straight ahead, and we're going to move our feet, drive our legs, and knock him back. The purpose of this drill is, number one, is to have short area contact with explosion and running your feet. Now I put the ball in there so he doesn't lunge, and then once that happens, we react to the ball being tossed, move your feet, knock the guy back, still driving your feet, not letting him cross the goal line. This is known as the goal line spin drill. Okay, It's a great job for tackling because if you watch number 41 right here, as he strikes and he's moving his legs, he doesn't bring his hips back once the guy spins and that guy can break the tackle. You can see him lunging and almost falling off. What you really want to do is bring your feet back with you. So here we go. Butt him up. Now you see his hips come back. Now you keep knocking him. And bat. Near hand bat emphasizes getting your players to understand that the defense can have a disruptive effect on the quarterback by deflecting passes at the line of scrimmage. Coaching point number one is we want to make sure we rush the quarterback first. Don't jump, never compromise a hit on the quarterback or sack. Get your eyes to the quarterback. If he is looking at you, you are now nearing the throwing lane. Work towards the quarterback's eyes and extend near arm as QB starts back. We will start with our defensive lineman on the line of scrimmage and look to simulate their reaction down inside versus a play action pass or naked. As they approach down inside, they will get to a point where they can cut the quarterback off and force him to be pulled up. At that point, the quarterback will direct his throw either outside or inside. We look for the defensive lineman now to match the quarterback's eyes okay, and try to bat the ball directly. Tomahawk and punch. Tomahawk and punch teaches defenders how to increase the number of cost fumbles without risking a missed tackle. We want to simulate a tackle from behind and we ensure the tackle first by grabbing the shoulder pad at the back of the neck. Eyes should come down to ball carrier's elbow and to the ball. If we see the elbow in and we can't see the ball, we will work a tomahawk chop. We will find the point of the ball and we will rip it out. If the ball is exposed with the elbow out, we will then try for a punch and punch it out. And we always want to finish with a scoop and score. We can drill this in pairs with multiple players across the line. In this example, our players are going for the tomahawk. All three ball carriers have the ball high and tight. We will secure the tackle with our offhand at the neck, as the player in the middle is doing, and go for a violent strip of tomahawk to get the ball out. We want to finish with a scoop and score through the line. In this example, the ball carriers are holding the ball out to their side. The ball is exposed. The defender's eyes go down to the ball, and now there is an opportunity for a punch. Number six in the middle of your screen secures the tackle at the shoulder. 
and punches the ball out. And again, immediately when we punch the Our next ball disruption drill is a drill we call Karate and Locate. Karate and Locate is designed to take advantage of poor ball security by the quarterback in the pocket. When we will blitz a linebacker or defensive back, okay, we want to make sure that we have every opportunity to create a turnover if it presents itself. In addition, defensive linemen will drill this on an everyday basis in pass rush as they close in on the quarterback and being ball aware so we can turn it into a, t a turnover for the Owls. Let's take a look at clip number one. Here's one of our linebackers. Notice the violent chop. The ball placement represents where the ball might be on the bag. We can move that around to different places so the players become ball aware. We want to finish with a violent karate chop and then locate the football. Try to recover it and scoop and score it. This is a great warm up for the beginning of practice. Get everybody going. You know, our first indie drill and overemphasize the fact that we want to be ball aware and disrupt them. Our next ball disruption drill is a drill that we call scoop and score. Scoop and score is designed for the Owls to pick up any ball on the ground and advance it towards the goal line, setting us up for a score or taking in for a score ourselves. In this case, we will scoop any ball in practice that's on the ground, any fumbled snap, any fumble by a ball carrier, or any pass that may potentially be a lateral, meaning a pass behind the line of scrimmage. Let's take a look here at our practice clip as we instruct three defenders to scoop and score. Defenders will start with their helmets to the back of the ball. Coach will blow a whistle. Defenders will get up as fast as possible and execute a scoop and score. When we scoop and score, we want our players to look it in with two eyes and two hands. Okay, too many times, young defenders will try to pick up the ball and look at the green grass in front of them and end up kicking or fumbling the ball and not never possessing it. In this case, we want to possess the ball first, so we look it in with two eyes and two hands. Our next coaching point is to bend at the ankles, knees, and hips. Don't be a waist bender. Bend and grab the bottom half of the ball. By the bottom half of the ball, we mean that our knuckles should touch the grass. Number 15 moves himself to the side of the ball, looks it in with two eyes and two hands, grabs the bottom half of the ball, sprints to the next dot. And again, this is a great warm up to get the guys loose and also get them in the mindset that every time we're going to scoop and score, we're going to advance it for a touchdown. He brings the ball back, and we emphasize putting the ball back the way you picked it up. Again, we don't want to take lazy reps, we want to bend at our ankles, knees, and hips. Place the ball down. Great example of number 40 here on your left-hand screen. Again, looking it in with two eyes and two hands, scooping the bottom half of the football. Want to make sure that we emphasize grabbing it high and tight throughout the drill. Our final drill in ball disruption circuit A is what we call second man in. Second man in emphasizes when the ball carrier has been hit and is controlled by the tackler, we want the next man involved to tackle the ball and try to rip it out or punch it out. Coach will direct the ball carrier to the direction left or right. Tackler will perform the angle tackle. On contact, defender, who is the side of the ball carrier, will now enter the drill and perform a strip attempt and rip or punch the ball out. Angle tackle by number 42. Number 46 comes right off the hash with the strip attempt. Angle tuck over to club and base by number 25. On contact, number one comes off the dot with the strip attempt.